Hey, After Effects enthusiasts. Today, we're going on an exciting adventure. Transforming a simple landscape photo into a stunning sunset video with just a few easy steps. Don't worry if you're a beginner. I'll guide you through every detail so you can confidently create your own impressive footage. So grab your favorite landscape photo and let's dive into After Effects together. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more After Effects tutorials. All right, let's get started. The first thing we need to do is analyze this photo. What do you see in the photo that's closest to the camera? Yep, it's definitely the long grass at the bottom. We're going to divide the photo into five or six areas with similar distances from the camera. Here's how I'm dividing it. Let's also briefly discuss the principle behind separating these areas before we actually do it. After separating an area, for example, area two, which is the river, I'll create an additional small water area near area one. The purpose of this is to prevent the transparent background from being revealed when the two areas move at different speeds. Now, let's move on to Photoshop. The first area is quite simple. I'll use the object selection tool and that's it. We don't need to create an additional area because it's the closest one. Hold Kutral and click on area one to select it. Then select layer one to delete area one, preparing to create area two. I'll create an additional water area here Selecting close to the edge of the water in the area I want to create, then press Shift plus F5 or go to Edit, Content Aware. Fill to create the additional area. It might look a bit rough, but that's okay. It'll be fine. Now I use the magnetic lasso tool to select area two. You can continue doing this until you're done. I'll speed up this part to save time. All right, now that we've separated the layers of our photo in Photoshop, let's save it as a file named Photoshop BSD. Now it's time to bring it into After Effects. Import the Photoshop file we just created. In the Import Kind section, choose Composition, Retain Layer Sizes. All the layers from our Photoshop file have been imported here. Let's create a new composition.
Since the layers have different sizes, they might not be in the right position. I'll scale them down to fit the frame, making sure to keep the aspect ratio of each layer consistent. Now I'll use the background layer as a reference to arrange the other layers back into their original positions. After converting the layers to 3D, I'll create a camera. Since this is a landscape photo with a wide field of view, I'll set the camera's angle of view to 30. Let's create a new view and switch to a top-down perspective. This will help us visualize the distance of each layer from the camera. We need to scale up the layers so that when they move along the x-axis, they won't go beyond the camera's view. We won't be using layer 7 because we'll replace it with a sunset later on. Now, let's arrange the layers in order of distance just like we analyzed earlier. The lower the layer number, the closer it is to the camera. I'll adjust the camera angle slightly to get the desired framing. Let's move the time indicator back to the beginning of the timeline and start setting keyframes for the movement of the layers. The principle of movement is that the closer the layers are to the camera, the faster they move, and the farther away they are, the slower they move. That's it. For the grass in the foreground, I think I'll split it into two layers to create an additional layer closer to the camera that moves at a higher speed. Now you can see the grass moving quite nicely. Oops, when I was separating the layers in Photoshop, I didn't delete the trees on the hill in layer 5, so now we have two identical groups of trees. This is my mistake, and I'll be more careful when separating layers in the future. Now let's create the sunset scene. I'll import an image of the sun into our project and add it to a new composition. The sun is very far away, so I move this layer the furthest away. It stands still 
and does not move like the other layers. Next, we'll create the sun rays. We'll use tint to convert the sun image to black and white. Then use curves to decrease the brightness until only the white sun is visible. After that, we'll apply CC Radial Fast Blur setting the blur center to the sun. Now we have those beautiful bright sun rays. By changing the blending mode to screen, the sun rays are integrated into our scene. However, our landscape is still too bright, making it difficult to see the rays. I'll use curves to decrease the brightness of all layers to create a sunset atmosphere. Let's copy the curves effect and paste it onto all the layers. However, the sunset light shouldn't be this white, so I'll use Lumetri color to adjust it to a warm orange-yellow hue. To make the light even more realistic, I'll add the lens flare effect. There are many types of lens flares to choose from.
Now, I'll use keyframes to adjust the flare brightness to match the brightness of the sun in our sunset scene. Looking great, isn't it? But I just noticed something that could be improved. The grass area I circled in red earlier looks a bit stiff and doesn't blend well with the hill. I'll cut off the top part and add some mask feather to help it blend into the hill above. Now everything looks more natural. And there you have it. We've successfully created a beautiful sunset scene with parallax scrolling and fake camera movement in After Effects, all starting from a single image. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and learned some new techniques. Remember, the key to creating stunning visuals is to experiment and have fun. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more After Effects tutorials. And if you have any questions or requests, feel free to leave them in the comments below. Thanks for watching.